Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. After a wet morning, it is finally starting to dry out. Brandon Rue will take a look on what's on tap for the rest of the afternoon. Plus, there are many funerals in the Gaza Strip today after 60 Palestinian protesters were killed, nearly all of them shot to death by Israeli forces. The UN has called for an emergency meeting to talk about the turmoil. You'll learn who the U.S. Ambassador of the United Nations is now blaming for the violence outbreak. But first, new developments in the controversial case of a man gunned down inside a Detroit gas station by a clerk who was immediately taken into custody. That tops the news here at noon. Now that clerk was managing the store and has been charged with murder. Local 4 reporter Rod Maloney live on Detroit's west side with a look at what happened in the courtroom today. Rod. Yeah, Hank, uh, they were in for a bond hearing today and we're getting much more about the whole incident. And for instance, that the clerk called 911 himself and then was arrested. But we're also learning a whole lot more about the family, about the businesses that they own and so forth. So let's take a look. 26-year-old Rami Ali Jaber of Dearborn Heights, video arraigned this morning at 36th District Court from the Detroit Detention Center. We learned he's high school educated, has close ties to family and community, works for his father at the newly minted Sitco station at McNichols in the Southfield Expressway. The assistant prosecutor in the case, William Lawrence, made it clear the case against Jaber is exceptionally strong. This is a rare case, Your Honor, where not only do we have video of the entire incident, but we also have audio of the entire incident. Um, and it clearly uh, paints the picture of a first-degree murder as the defendant is charged with. Though his attorney, DeRay Elder, asked for bond, the judge ordered Jaber held without bond pending trial. Out at the station, all is quiet. It's closed down for the second day in a row after the shooting on Sunday. It's a busy station, though, with many customers still looking to do business here. One of them, Zachary James, told us he knows Jaber from his business dealings. Disappointed and sad because somebody had to lose their life over something that didn't have anything to do with anything. So it was just kind of messed up right now. Now, we've been looking into the company that owns this uh, station, or at least leases this station. It's called F&A Properties, and it's owned by Jaber's father, Ali. And we're told that they have something on the orderly state record show, 14 different gasoline stations, including this one around Metro Detroit. Uh, we'll have more coming up on Local 4 News at 5. Coming uh, in Detroit on the west side, Rod Maloney, Local 4. Rod, thank you. Right now, we're following breaking news from New York City. That's where flamboyant and successful journalist and novelist Tom Wolfe has died. Wolfe was known for his colorful writing style. He produced major nonfiction works like The Right Stuff and later moved on to timely novels and satires like The Bonfire of the Vanities. Tom Wolfe was 88 years old. Also developing this noon, funerals being held in Gaza for dozens killed on Monday when Israeli troops opened fire during Palestinian protests in the deadliest day of violence there since the war in 2014. Monday's violence came as the U.S. inaugurated its first embassy in Jerusalem. NBC's Richard Engel reports now from Gaza. There are many funerals in the Gaza Strip today, and they are angry. 60 Palestinian protesters, hospital officials say, were killed, nearly all shot dead by Israeli forces. Among the victims, seven under the age of 18. 2,700 others were injured when Palestinians rushed toward the closed and heavily fortified Israeli border. The Gaza Strip, run by Hamas, is sealed off. Palestinians have been protesting here against their lack of freedom for weeks. But their fury boiled over on Monday when the U.S. Embassy was officially moved to Jerusalem with President Trump's blessing. The Palestinians saying it negates their claim to the city. The goal of the protests, to show their outrage. Some say they can't take it anymore. Israel says it will and must defend its borders and blames Hamas for pushing people to violence. President Trump says moving the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem was long overdue and will open the door to peace. So far, no sign of it. 
Palestinians here say the peace process is effectively dead. They can't have peace, they say, with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu or President Trump, especially after the move of the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. They say it kills their hope of having uh, Jerusalem as the capital of a Palestinian state as well. So, no talk of a peace process, not even talk of peace. Richard Engel, NBC News, in the Gaza Strip. In response to the protests, the U.N. Security Council has called for an emergency meeting. Kuwait requested that meeting after dozens of Palestinian protesters were killed in violent clashes with Israeli forces on the Gaza border. Ambassador Nikki Haley defended Israel's actions. Make no mistake, Hamas is pleased with the results from yesterday. I asked my colleagues here in the Security Council, who among us would accept this type of activity on your border? No one would. No country in this chamber would act with more restraint than Israel has. Throughout the day, we will continue to monitor the protests and bring you any updates at clickondetroit.com as they happen. Let's give you a look at live pictures right now. President Donald Trump speaking at the National Peace Officers Memorial Service. This is the 37th annual service at the U.S. State Capitol in D.C. It's part of National Police Week, which is designed to pay special recognition to law enforcement officers and agents who have died in the line of duty. The ongoing search for human remains in Macomb Township suspended right now until further notice. Digging will resume after officials are able to have a meeting to determine a reasonable location to continue searching. Now, Warren Mayor Jim Fout said that police were weighing whether to excavate three other locations throughout the state. Fout said two of those other locations are in Macomb County. The third, we're told, is in northern Michigan. Well, turning our attention to weather, a little bit of a wet start to our day, but uh, you can see our sky cam there from Metro Airport. A lot of cloud cover. Downtown Detroit looking wet, and same deal with uh, downtown Mount Clemens. Let's get you over to uh, Brandon Rue. He is live in Royal Oak at the Meyer store with a look at what we can expect today. Hey, Brandon. Hank, good afternoon. It is severe weather alert day here at the Meyer in. Royal Oak, a partnership that we have between Midland Radio Corporation, WDIV, and Meyer, the first of three that we're doing this season. And the reason why it's severe weather season, last night we had a weak risk for severe weather in the middle of the night, and that's always our biggest fear. And one of the reasons we want to get you into one of these, offering a great discount, free batteries, and peace of mind to have your severe weather always covered. Let's start with the forecast, though, and we have temperatures outside right now in the rain-covered lens from Windsor, 66 degrees, a north wind at 14, and a little cool front still to come through uh, today to clear out the skies. But here's a look at the fading showers, and that's a good thing. Close-up look couple of showers over St. Clair County, parts of southern Ontario, and not a whole lot after that. Between now and 1 or 2 o'clock, might get a stray light shower or two. Nothing crazy, but through the late afternoon, some clearing and getting into those 70s. Hank, we're here live throughout the day. Your local forecasters for severe weather alert radio day. We're going to talk more about this live coming up. Brandon, thank you. A woman accused of shooting her boyfriend to death was denied bond. We're talking about 34-year-old Marita Talley. Police say that last Friday, Talley called 911 saying that she had shot her boyfriend. When police got there to the house in Pontiac, they say they found multiple bullet casings and a handgun next to the victim, William Bell. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Talley now faces four charges, including first-degree murder. An Adrian woman is out of a job today after allegedly lacing brownies that she baked for co-workers with a laxative. Police were called to a business in Saline, uh, just outside of Ann Arbor, after receiving a tip that an employee planned to put a laxative in brownies prepared for a going away party for another co-worker. Now, those brownies were confiscated before anybody could eat them. And the employee later admitted to tampering with those tasty treats. No charges filed, but the company did fire that 47 year old woman. Still to come here at noon, Motown music legend Smokey Robinson appearing in Washington, but he is not singing. We'll tell you why he's testifying today. 
Also, trouble in the skies, a terrifying situation as a pilot is almost sucked out of a plane where it happened right after the break.